Hey guys, welcome to this visualization of JavaScript reference values. Now this actually forms part of an introductory email course that I offer on thegreatsync.com just to give you a glimpse into this method of learning JavaScript. So if you'd like to find out more, please head on over and subscribe. So far, we have represented primitive values and that's numbers, strings, null, undefined symbols. These values, these primitives, we represent as islands. Islands in the ocean flow of our code. Why islands? Well, islands have a fixed location, a set of coordinates so that we can find them and we can use them in our code. Objects, functions and arrays are different. They don't have a fixed location that we can use. And this is because they live in a separate area, a separate space in the JavaScript memory. This is a heap data structure and I call it the heap multiverse. It's an invisible parallel universe kept separate to where our primitive islands live. But if we don't have coordinates for objects, if we don't know where they are, how can we use them in our code? That's where reference values come in. Right, let's go ahead and visualize reference values. Over here, we have an object, a flying ship. Now, objects are collections of key value pairs. The keys are the crew members inside this ship. They shine a light down onto islands. In other words, they're pointers. But how can we find this flying ship? Reference values give us that ability. They are also a type of island found with the other primitives. And they come equipped with a special telescope that points up at objects. They're able to locate the object in the heap. Now, we can assign variables to this reference. And that's what the genie is here. Genies are expressions. That's why genies always have weird facial expressions. Their job is to find us a value. We can assign them to a reference. We can give a genie a name and that reference will point up at the object and we can now use it. But let's now dive into some code and actually see that in action. What I'm going to do is create two objects and they represent people. One is a developer, name is Hamza and age is something random and he has the skills of a JavaScript developer. Um, and then we also have a designer. So const Alfredo also assigned to an object. And just like that, we have two different genies a genie called Hamza and a genie called Alfredo. They are sitting on a reference island and they are looking through the telescope, each at a different flying ship. Now, Hamza has decided he no longer wants to be a developer and we're going to replace him with a new developer, Sasha. Now, if we were maintaining this code base, instead of creating another object literal, we might be tempted to, to do something like this. This makes it look like Sasha is now getting the same object that Hamza has. So Hamza points at this object and that's the object that we want for Sasha. So we don't have to write that all out because we know Sasha has the same skill levels. All we need to do is go Sasha.name equals Sasha. The problem is what do you think the name for Hamza is now? Can you guess it? That's right, it's Sasha. If we were to go Hamza.name, we would get Sasha. So what's happened here? Why are we now getting the same value for both of these variables? And that's because they share the same pointer. Both of the genies are sitting on the same reference island looking through the same telescope at the same object. So if we were to create a change in that object, either Hamza's or Sasha's, it wouldn't make a difference because it's the same object. As long as we do it for one, we would be doing it for both. Let's look at another example. Let's say 
Hamza has decided now to be a designer. Hamza is going to get the skills of Alfredo. So let's go Hamza dot skill levels equals Alfredo. And let's say that Hamza's skill levels aren't nearly as good at After Effects as Alfredo. So we need to adjust that. So we would go Hamza dot skill levels dot After Effects equals two. What would Alfredo's skill level in After Effects be now? Can you guess what this would be? Would it be two? So why has that happened? Well, let's look at the Alfredo object. Alfredo has a property inside of that object, a pointer called skill levels. Skill levels points at a reference island that finds this object in the heap. In our attempt at giving Hamza the same skills as Alfredo, we assign the skill levels property in his object. So this object over here, the, the crew member sitting inside that ship called skill levels, he now shines his light down on the same reference island that the Alfredo skill levels crew member is shining at. So they both pointing at this reference island and that reference island points up at a single object. As soon as we go and change Hamza's skill levels, we also end up changing Alfredo's skill levels. And that's because they share the same reference. This is called unintended mutation and it happens all the time. It's very easy to forget where your variables are pointing at. Having an understanding of references is the key to knowing how to use objects in our program, that is, passing them around as pointers. Now, in order to avoid some of the mistakes that we have seen already, we can use object cloning and that can ensure that we aren't mutating the same object by mistake. Next up, we're going to look at this in detail.